They are back. DraftKings contributors Nick Fryer and Rotowire's Eric Halterman. Guys, 14 game MLB slate. Let's take a look at some of your favorite sportsbook plays for this evening. So we're covering the bases here first. A run line or money line that you're interested in, Nick? I'm going to go with Giants at minus one and a half. That was the first one that I saw once I realized that Kevin Gossman is going to be starting tonight going up against the Cardinals. Of course, look, the Giants have been one of the best teams in baseball. They're one of the best records in the game right now. So, I, I mean, the money line, not really going to be an option for you tonight if you're looking at the payout. But when I know that, but still, uh, Gossman has been shoving, and, and he did last time against the, the Cardinals too. So I have all the confidence in the world in him doing his job. And then when it comes to the Cardinals too, look, I, Wainwright is supposed to be starting for the Cardinals tonight. And all right, fine, he did okay last time against the, the Cardinals, but that was the one time, I mean, sorry, against the Giants, but that was the one time in the series that the Giants covered the spread as the favorites. Um, and the, the Cardinals have one of the worst bullpens in the game right now too. So I would think that we're going to see a nice little disparity in this one tonight, and the Giants are going to win it. All right, Eric, where are you going? Run line or money line that you're enticed by? Yeah, I'm maybe going to cheat a little bit and go a little bit before the main slate because I think the best option here is Marlins at minus 125 over the Phillies in the first game of their doubleheader. Um, I know there's some, some decent options later, but nobody should be just minus 125 against Matt Moore these days. Um, 540 ERA may even be too kind for him. Um, excuse me, by expected ERA and 50s over six. Uh, and then his x fifth is right up near six as well. Just nowhere near uh, league average and any of the underlying numbers really. 16.3% ground ball uh, strikeout rate. That'd be quite a low ground ball rate, but his ground ball rate is also low at 36.6%. And he's walking too many guys, 11.6% walk rate. Uh, on the other side, we've got Sandy Alcantara, who's 309 ERA might flatter him a bit. Um, the ERA estimators generally have him in the high threes, but he has outperformed those estimators throughout his career. So he might just be one of those guys who can reliably get that softer contact. Doesn't get a ton of strikeouts. 21.4% uh, strikeout rate is a few ticks below league average. He does need to get that soft contact, but he's done that. He's kept the ball on the ground um, as he's always done. 54.7% ground ball rate is quite a strong number. Um, so even right. though... The, oh, yeah. No, go ahead. I'm like, honestly, need more coffee. I thought you were done. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. I'm going to drink the coffee. Just, just last thing, even though the Marlins have the worst offense here, I think the gap between those pitchers is too big to justify just the minus 125 for the Marlins. Okay. And now I'm Eric's like, this is the signal. I'm done. Okay. Uh, Thor, relax. All right. How about a game total? The wheels are really falling off here for me this morning. Uh, how about a game total, Eric, that uh, you're targeting something that you're interested in? Yeah, I alluded, I alluded to Eli Morgan, a uh, Cleveland starter earlier, and I'm going to touch on him again here. Uh, I like the over in that Cleveland Oakland game. The over is set at just eight. Um, and I, Chris Bassett on the other side is a good pitcher, but I think the over can't be eight in a game with Eli Morgan in it. The teams are already averaging 8.8 .8 runs per game, so all they need is an average performance. Again, Morgan, 8.44 ERA through five starts, allowing eight homers, which is no surprise given that his ground ball rate is just 20.9%, um, easily the lowest among anybody who started any meaningful number of games. It doesn't get a lot of whips either. It doesn't walk guys, but that's because they've already homered. Um, so I think he will give up a fair portion of the runs here. Chris Bassett on the other side is a good pitcher, but he's not an ace. Uh, most of the ERA estimators have him in the high threes. Uh, combines a league average strikeout and ground ball rate with a pretty good walk rate. So I don't think he'll give up a ton, but I don't think he'll need to to hit the over here. All right, Nick, a game total that you like. Well, you guys know I like to cheat and I go with team game totals, not usually just, you know, team combined game totals. So I'm going to go with the Royals at four and a half against the Orioles. Of course, I like to go with the, the AL Central quite a bit for these bets as well. Um, when it comes to the Royals specifically, whenever I see them going up against left-handed pitching, I got to see what their recent form looks like. And they have limited exposure against left-handed pitching this month. But when they've had those opportunities, they've taken advantage of them. Top five in OPS against lefties and in ISO uh, over this uh, throughout the course of July. And they're going up against a guy in Keegan Aiken who I love to target he's given up was uh five hits in what was it his last five starts including his uh his outing against Cleveland all the way back on June 16th and and what was it um I was your six plus six hits now oh, by now the wheels are falling you know what is Loki over there with Thor right now Jesse because I feel like that's where all this chaos is happening 
Yeah, honestly, like the god of mischief is around here somewhere because either, yeah. Either way, Keegan Aiken has given up four plus runs in each of those outings that I just mentioned. Five um in in what was it three of those five outings? So you know he's he's prone to giving up five runs himself. And then the Orioles bullpen has not been good during July. They haven't been good all season, but especially in July this month, they have a six seven five ERA, a five nine nine five. I mean, these feel like cartoon numbers, and then a two oh three home run per nine inning average. So I have no problem going with the uh, Royals to score at least five runs against the Orioles tonight. All right, Nick, hit us with a pitcher prop. You wrote up a couple in your article on DK Nation. I did. I did. It sounds like you hit, you know what the notes I have jotted down in front of me or read the article, I guess. But I, I am did. actually going to go with Kevin Gossman. I have a couple others, too, that I like tonight. But Kevin Gossman's strikeout total, as much as I'm not going to go with him for DFS purposes tonight, when I see that his strikeout total is set at six and a half, I have to hammer the over on that one. Again, I mentioned before how he did well against the Cardinals last time out. He had eight Ks against them. They do not strike out a ton against lefties, yet he's, I mean, against righties, excuse me. Yet he still hit tonight's over. And then you look at what he did against the national they do not strike out a ton against righties either and he had nine against them so even if you you know you could still like him for dfs purposes but sometimes you know runs happen whatever i still feel comfortable enough with him going with the run line bet as well but here especially for the strikeout prop i think that this is my favorite bet tonight gossman going over six and a half strikeouts eric what do you think a pitcher prop that you're interested in I think it's Gossman as well. That that six and a half is too low, and I'm not really sure why. It's just minus 105. He's hit that over in nine of his last 12, and he really is um, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the league. That it's happened ever since his midseason move to the Reds in 2019, at a 31.9% strikeout rate in uh, in the second half with his new team there, and he's kept it over 30% uh, in the last two seasons as well. Uh, as Nick mentioned, the Cardinals don't strike out a ton. Uh, which is probably the most important thing to look at um, for these uh, strikeout props, other than, of course, the pitcher's own numbers. But you also just have to look at the quality of the offense. Um, they're the fourth worst team by WRC+. And, of course, you can get to a high strikeout total just by volume rather than rate if the team just lets you stay in the game for quite a long time, which I think they will. So I think uh, pretty pretty clear top option on the board for me. Okay, Eric, how about a hitter prop? Uh, we're we're going to go back to Eli Morgan. Sorry, Eli or Eli's dad, if you're watching this, or Eli's anybody else in Eli's family. But again, the most important thing, I think, to look at uh, for these home run props is ground ball rate. If you can't keep the ball on the ground, you're going to give up homers. Morgan's given up homers because, again, 20.9% ground ball rate thus far in the majors. And we should expect that ground ball rate to stay very low. Um, he's had a ground ball rate no higher than 31.3% and any minor league stop since 2018. Uh, so th this is who he is. He's, he's gotten the majors despite that. So he has some other skills, but I, I can't see a world in which he doesn't have a home run problem. So I'd throw out a couple A's. Uh, Matt Olson, who I talked about before, plus 230 is really not great odds for a home run prop, given that even with a pretty friendly matchup you're not extremely likely to homer uh, but again this this is about as friendly as it gets in terms of matchup uh, matt chapman at plus 360 has plenty of power i think that could easily happen as well as sean murphy at plus 400 so really i'd be looking to throw darts at whatever A's you like tonight all right, Nick, what do you think? How about a hitter prop you're interested in? Yeah, so as much as I like going with Mookie Betts and, and like the Dodgers offense against the Rockies tonight against Sensatella, and as much as I like the Royals against the Orioles tonight, especially Salvador Perez going up against Aiken, he does well against left-handed pitching. I'm actually going to go with the guy who I mentioned as my value pick for tonight. I'm going to go with Mitch Haniger over one and a half total bases. Again, this is a good matchup for him. He does well against Heaney. He does well against left-handed pitching in general. I know this month has been slower. After June was also a slow month. For him in terms of power but this is the type of matchup where i would expect him to get right because he's had he has three home runs and a triple against this guy in 20 career plate appearances so i so hanniger is going to be my pick tonight for over one and a half total bases all right how about for extra bases we get a second half future bet nick where are you going with this one Okay, so I am actually going to go with the Red Sox to go over 91 and a half wins this season. And I know that some people in the Boston area might think, oh, well, the Red Sox have played out of their minds. They have a 604 winning percentage. There's no way they can maintain this. Well, in order to hit this over, they don't have to maintain this. They just have to win 37 of their the rest of their games. And guess what? That means you're playing just over 500 ball uh, to, to, for the rest of the way. And they're going against teams that they've done well against, too. I mean, of course, the Yankees, if they can actually play against them, uh, they're, they've 
own them this season. Same with, with the Orioles, Rays. Um, the closest team to 500 right now that they've played in the AL East is the, the, the uh, Blue Jays, as one might expect. But the re- looking at the rest of their schedule, too, they don't have too many challenges along their way. Maybe the White Sox, that's about it. So it's a favorable schedule for them. And they're coming in a position now where if they maintain their level of pace, they're, they're going to win 98 games. So I, I have no hesitation about saying that they're going to win at least 92 uh, the rest of the way. Eric, a second half future bet. Yeah, I was taking a look at some of the division odds and comparing them to Fangraph's playoff odds, which I've generally found to be pretty trustworthy. It seems like you can get um, decent odds on a couple teams that are long shots to win the division, but still very much in the race. You know, the kind of team where if they make the right trade in the next two weeks, uh, maybe their team looks uh, meaningfully better and they can close, you know, three, four win gap. Uh, the Phillies at plus 600, that's an implied odds of 14.3%. Fangraphs gave them a 17.2% chance. And uh, the Reds at plus 450, uh, that, that would be implied odds of 18.2%. Fangraphs, again, has them at 22.1%. So really kind of a similar deal with both of those teams. It's it's correct that neither of them is the favorite to win their division. They're a few games back to the leader and, you know, a lot less talented team than the leader. But again, all it takes is finding the right trade. If, if they make a good trade and the guys ahead of them don't, uh, which isn't what we should expect, but with these odds, you know, there's certainly a chance that they could easily go on a run over the next two weeks, close that gap. So I think you get pretty, pretty fair prices on both of those. Those would be the guys I'd be looking to take a chance on.